Now I already talked extensively about the effectiveness of solid anti-tank dogs in one of my previous videos. However, I've since come across other information from primary sources that clear up some misinformation on the anti-tank dogs or Tankhunde, literally tank dogs as the Germans called them. Most notably is the myth about the dogs going for solid diesel engines. Additionally, I also came across a German army regulation that mentions the dogs as well. So we also look at what they wrote about them. As a source, we have a Soviet document from July 1941 that was translated by Peter from Tank Archives. Be sure to check out his channel here, by the way. It is addressed to the chief of the second department of the GAP 2 and BTU named Dimayenko. Note that GAP 2 is short for Main Auto Armored Directorate and the BTU for Armor and Tank Directorate, which was a department within the GAP 2. It starts with the following statement. I report that trained dogs carrying an anti-tank pouch filled with high explosive can be considered a viable method of combat with enemy tanks. So far nothing new, yet here comes the next paragraph. Trials of this anti-tank method were conducted by the Communications Directorate and Engineering and Armored Directorate in 1939 to 1940. The results of the trials proved that this method is effective. Quite often it is claimed that the anti-tank dogs were a measure of desperation by the Soviets that was a result of the German attack and string of victories. Yet this does not seem to be the case, at least according to this document, trials were conducted already in 1939 and 1940. Additionally, I must add that I come across my fair share of German wartime introductions and changes that some attribute to wartime development and or as a reaction to certain enemy weapon systems or tactics that were actually outlined before that particular enemy had entered the war or even before the war had started itself. Quite many people completely underestimate how long certain developments take and that a war often isolates certain developments, yet was not necessarily the cause of the idea and or development. Yet let us move on. The next paragraph is even better. On the armored and tank directorate of the Red Army, proving grounds at Kubinka station, an MS-1 tank moving its second gear was destroyed by a dog carrying an anti-tank pouch, which caused the following damage. Torn track, torn out tank side, torn off and destroyed drive wheel, damage to the upper front plate and lower hull, tank turret torn off. Doing all other trials with dummy pouches, dogs dove under a moving tank without fail. Now some of you might ask, well, why is this important? Well, a common claim about Soviet anti-tank dogs is that they are were trained on Soviet tanks that used diesel engines, and since the Germans used petrol engines, the dogs went, when went loose, went for Soviet tanks instead of going after the German tanks. The issue is that not all Soviet tanks used diesel engines. Peter also makes a very good point that training your anti-tank dogs on your best tank, like the T-34 and KV-1, might be a bit of a waste of resources. This seems to be underlined by the fact that the Soviets trained the dogs against the M MS-1 tank, which was far more dated than even the other rather obsolete T-26 tank, and other tanks still in service with the Red Army. To quote Sir Logan Granson, the T-18 was the Red Army's first Soviet-designed tank. It was also called the MS-1, first small support vehicle. The tank was produced from 1928 to 1931, and this tank had, according to Tank Equilibria and other sources, a petrol, not a diesel engine. Now one might argue that during the war the Soviets might have trained the dogs on other tanks. Fair enough, yet keep in mind that the Soviet BT-7 and T-26 still used gasoline engines. So they likely used those. Also the Soviets were able to capture German tanks, so it is rather unlikely they would have trained their dogs on their T-34s and other modern diesel engine tanks both for reasons of availability, but likely also because they were aware of the issue regarding friendly fire by dogs. The document also mentions production figures. The Central Dog Training School of the Communications Directorate has staff that can train these dogs as well as staff that can use them. 3,000 anti-tank pouches were produced at Gromov Factory No. 2 in 1939 to 1940. Furthermore, it is explained how the explosives on the dog is triggered. A dog that is trained to dive under a tank is equipped with a special anti-tank pouch filled with explosives. The pouch is equipped with a lever. 
When the dog dives under the tank, the lever pulls out the safety pin, the striker hits the detonator and the explosive go off underneath the tank. In January 1942, the Germans released a pamphlet about Soviet explosives, primers, mines and fuses. The 16th entry is called Tankhund, literally tank dog. Note that other German sources refer to these dogs as Minenhunde, literally mine dogs. In the pamphlet it is noted that the sources for the entry are captured equipment and statement by prisoners of war. To quote the document, the Russians have recently trained dogs to fight combat vehicles. These are dogs not quite the size of a German Shepherd. It is hard to tell when this entry was written. We know it was published on January 1st, 1942. Another entry of the use of anti-tank dogs is from 23rd October 1941, in which it was reported that the Soviets used them. To complement the minefields, the Russians also used mine dogs, which they strapped 2 kg explosive charges to their backs and which they rushed against the German tanks. Note that I translated Hetzen here simply with rushed. This is not an ideal translation, but this is a typical example of where the word was used in a rather imprecise fashion. If you want to learn more about the correct translation of Hetzer and Hetzen, be sure to check out this video from the German Panzer Museum. And yes, the video is in English, they have an English channel as well. But back to the pamphlet. The description of the device seems to match the Soviet document. The explosive device with two carrying bags is strapped to the dogs so that the wooden lever of the detonator points obliquely upward. Note I only have access to a scanned document and parts of it were faded out, so the parts in brackets are my educated guess. What is interesting is that the first German account noted 2 kg explosives, whereas the pamphlet notes 6 kg for each of the two side pockets, which would mean a total of 12 kg explosives. Meanwhile, according to Peter, a note on the diagram lists the mass of the device as approximately 4.5 kg. Sadly, I don't know if this means the device with or without explosives. According to Peter, the document does not specify. I assume that the German source with 6 kg per side pocket is likely wrong. I googled a bit and it seems the dog owners note that the German Shepherd can carry around 25-30% to of their own weight. Meanwhile, Wikipedia notes the maximum weight of 32 kg for female Shepherds and 40 kg for male ones. This would mean a maximum of 12 kg. Yet the pamphlet noted those dogs were usually smaller. Additionally, I assume, but I could be wrong here, the dogs back then were smaller due to general lack of food, medical treatment, etc. The only aspect speaking for a larger load is that, well, this dog did a one-way trip. Yet the 12 kg doesn't account for the weight of the device itself. So it is rather unlikely that the German pamphlet is correct here. But maybe the dogs were fed with dog food the equivalent of stalinium. The pamphlet also explains how the device works. The dog runs under the fighting vehicle, the lever, which is about 20 cm long, which is about 7.9 inch, hits the low-lying parts of the chassis and is pushed backwards. This pulls out the safety pin, releases the firing pin, detonates the detonator, the primer charge, and this in turn by transmission of ignition detonates the explosive charge in the side pockets. Which is pretty much the same as the Soviet document. Finally, the German document also contains a very elaborate, extremely detailed account on how to engage those dogs. Tank dogs are disposed by shooting them. Tankhunde werden durch Abschießen beseitigt. The myth or better claim is that these dogs were hard to shoot. The argument for this is usually that dogs are rather small targets and fast moving targets. Well, small is rather relative since if you are shooting at an enemy soldier that is in cover he provides a smaller target. Of course, he's usually not moving, but unless these dogs were trained to run evasive maneuvers, they would mostly run in a beeline to the target, and Panzers and other armored vehicles with a few exceptions like the Ferdinand were generally armed with machine guns, and the closer the dog gets, the bigger the target it becomes as well. Sadly, I found only one statement on this, but it seems to confirm my assessments. This is referring to October 1941. The commander of a German tank regiment says about these dogs' missions, I have not heard of any case within our attack area that this trick of the Red Army soldiers succeeded. We shot all the dogs. To summarize, the claims that Soviet created anti-tank dogs as a desperate measure following the German invasion of the Soviet Union is wrong. Documents indicate that the development and tests were already conducted in 1939 and 1940, whereas the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941. The claim that dogs, instead of attacking German 
Panzers ran towards Soviet tanks due to smelling diesel since the dogs were supposedly trained on Soviet diesel tanks seems rather dubious. First, since not all Soviet tanks had, di had diesel engines. Second, only the more modern and combat effective tanks like the T-34 and KV-1 had diesel engines. As such, it would be a waste to train dogs on these tanks when there were plenty of Soviet petrol engine tanks like the T-26 and PT-7 around. Third, the Soviets were very likely aware of the smell issue and thus also would not have chosen diesel tanks for training. Finally, dogs being hard to shoot might be an issue unless you sit in a tank, tank behind a machine gun and it runs directly towards you. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you to Andrew for reviewing the script. Thanks to Peter for answering some of my questions about his article. Thank you to all my Patreon and subscriber supporters for financing trips to museum and archives. Thank you for watching and see you next time.